What are you talking about? Okay. So let's see what that means. Okay. What does it mean to be a piecewise function? So the reason why we have piecewise functions is because in the real world, the majority of the time, a real world situation cannot be modeled by one single function. Okay. Things usually change over time. So for a little while, it may be like a quadratic function, but then after a certain amount of time, it starts behaving differently, so maybe a linear function describes it better. So that's why we have piecewise functions. An example that I like to use um, is the tax bracket, okay? I know you guys won't pay taxes yet. Some of you may who have a job, but um, your parents pay income tax based on how much their income is, okay? In America, we don't have a flat tax rate for everybody. Um, so if you make between this amount and this amount, then you pay this tax rate. But if you make more than that, you pay a higher tax rate. And if you make more than that, you pay an even higher tax rate. Um, so that's an example of a piecewise function. It depends on where your income falls, determines what income tax rate you pay. Um, so let's look at this function right here. We've got two functions pieced together. We've got x squared minus 2 if x is less than 1. Okay, if your x value is less than 1, then you follow the function x squared minus 2. If your x value is greater than or equal to 1, you follow the function x plus 1. So let's just start with evaluating uh, a piecewise function. If I ask you, here's f of x, this piecewise function, what is f of negative 4? Now, you don't give me two answers, okay? Even though there are two functions, you don't give me two answers. You start by figuring out negative 4, where does it fit? Is it less than 1 or is it greater than 1? Y'all tell me, is it less than 1 or greater than 1? It's less than 1, so we're going to use the first function. We're going to ignore the second function. The second function does not apply when your x value is negative 4 because negative 4 is less than 1. So it fits in that piece, so I'm only going to plug it into the first piece. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 2 is 14. So f of negative 4 is 14. Okay, how about 0? Less than 1, greater than 1? Less than 1. So we plug that one into the first piece as well. 0 squared minus 2 is negative 2. Now, they love to ask you about that point where it changes at 1. That's where you just have to pay attention to the minor detail of where the equal to is. The equal to in this case is the second equation, so we plug 1 into the second equation. 1 plus 1 is positive 2. And for f of positive 2, 2 is greater than 1, so we plug it into the second one. Okay? So that's if they ask you to evaluate a piecewise function. You start by figuring out which piece applies to this x value based on the inequality, and then you plug it into that piece. One answer. Okay? One answer. Even if there are two, maybe three functions, there can be even more. It's two or more functions make up a piecewise function. Okay, so are we good with evaluating? Okay, let's look at graphing. Okay, this is what people tend to struggle with a little bit, but I think I've come up with a way for it to make more sense. All right, so what I've got here is I've got you a table, completely blank, set up, but there's a big red line in the middle of it. What we're going to do is at that line, above the line, we're going to put 1. Below the line, we're going to put 1. Okay, the reason why I picked 1 is because that's where our function changes. That's the number with the inequality. Okay, so the top part is going to be that x is less than 1. So it's x squared minus 2 if x is less than 1. I'm just rewriting it beside mine because I can't see my equation. Okay. So I'm going to just write down some x values less than 1. I'm just going to count sequentially. 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? 
And then my other piece is x plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 1. So I'm going to count up from 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Now, you can plug these numbers in by hand. You can type them into your y equals. And you can go to the table. But the important thing is that you only use values that you wrote down. So, like, I'm going to type in x squared minus 2. I'm going to go to my table, and I'm only going to write down the y values that correspond to negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay? I don't care about all those other values. Okay? I don't care what the y value is when x equals 3 for this function, because x equals 3 is the other piece. Okay? Go ahead and grab it. Uh, Okay, so let's just plot that side. Negative 3, positive 7. Negative 2, positive 2. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 2. Now, before you put a point at 1, negative 1. This function doesn't work for x equals 1 because there's no equal to under that inequality. So we're going to put an open circle. Thank you, guys. Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You too. Okay. Um, because the inequality here does not have the equal to Where this point is, 1, negative 1, we're not going to put a point. We're going to put an open circle because that's where it would be, okay? But we can't actually equal 1 for this side of the function, okay? We can get really, really close to it. That's why we put the circle there. We don't just stop at 0. We still put the circle there because we, I mean, x can equal 0.9999, okay? But I'm not going to type that into my calculator, all right? I'm just going to use this. Now, to fill in my graph, hopefully you all know that this is supposed to be a parabola. It's supposed to curve around there. But if you need to, look at the graph uh, to connect your dots. To know how to connect those points correctly, you should know that it has this parabola-like shape. Now, I'm not going to draw the entire thing that I see right here because I don't go past 1 for this part of my uh, function. So I ignore that side of the graph over there. Okay? Now I'm going to do the other half. That's my left half. Now I'm going to do the right half. Okay? So I'm going to plug in these values. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Functions x plus 1. That's really easy. You just add 1 to all your x values. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Plot your points. 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6. You can keep going, but hopefully you see, oh, hey, this is a line with a slope of 1. Now, this one did have the equal to, so 1, 2 is a point. Okay, 1, 2 is a point because this side had the equal to under the inequality. Now, yeah, that doesn't look like normal function. Piecewise functions are not going to look like normal functions. And this is not continuous because the two pieces do not uh, meet. Okay, the two pieces do not meet. There's that gap right there from 1, negative 1, and then it jumps up to 1, 2. Okay, we call that a jump discontinuity, if you're curious about the technical name there. Um, It's a jump discontinuity because the function literally jumps y values and then it continues on. Um, some piecewise functions are continuous. Some of them will meet at the point where they change, uh, but this one does not. Okay? There's a disconnect there. All right. Yes, ma'am? Yes. Yes, they will be given to you. Yes, the inequality part 
will always be given to you, okay? They will give you a function and they will tell you the the x is less than or greater than. They will tell you that every time. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Whatever number follows that inequality, that's where we're going to change. Yeah. Okay? Now, uh, let's look at an example that has three pieces. Okay, flip your paper over. This piecewise function has three functions. We look like the line x when our x value is less than negative 2, where x minus 1 if x is between negative 2 and positive 1, and it's x squared if x is greater than 1. So I'm going to give you a second to practice with the evaluate. You evaluate that function. Okay, so this one changes in two places. Okay, it changes first at negative 2, and then it changes at positive 1. Okay, so I've got negative 2 at that first line above and below. I've got 1 at the second line above and below. So I'm going to count backwards from negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I'm going to hit all the values between negative 1 and negative, uh, excuse me, negative 2 and positive 1. So negative 1 and 0. And then I'm going to count a few after 1, uh, 1, 2, 3. I'm not going to go very far because that last one's x squared. It's going to end up off my graph. Okay. So we've got x when x is less than negative 2, uh, x minus 1 between negative 2 and 1 and then x squared when x is greater than 1. So I'm just rewriting that so I can see it. All right, so if our function is y equals x, then that means our y values are the same as our x values. And at negative 2, is it going to be an open circle or is it going to be a point? Open circle, because the first piece does not have the equal to. So let's go ahead and plot those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, go to negative 2, and that's going to be an open circle right there. Okay. I am going to extend my line past negative 5. I could have done more x values beyond negative 5. I just didn't because I didn't have room for it. Uh, but it is important to know that that part of the graph is going to extend. Do you have a question? No. Okay. All right, middle part. X minus 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Subtract 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. These endpoints are going to be a point because we do have equal to. Equal to negative 2, equal to 1. So negative 2, negative 3, and 1, 0. Bless you. This does not extend. Okay, this only goes between negative 2 and 1 because the inequality only says between negative 2 and 1. So it doesn't go past those points. That's it. It's a segment. It's not a ray or a line. It's a segment. Okay, plug in 1, 2, and 3. Those go into x squared. So 1, 4, and 9. At 1, it's going to be an open circle because that does not have the equal to under that inequality. So 1, 1 is an open circle. 2, 4, 3, 9. Be careful that you don't just straight dot to dot connect this because it is x squared. It's a parabola. It is supposed to have some curve to it. I know it's kind of hard to put much curve in that small of a space. You're not moving very far x-wise. But Try and make it look like it's curved a little bit. Okay, make sure that they don't just look like straight segments because it is a parabola. Okay, so uh, 